Hello students, welcome back. So we defined the concept of torque in our last session. Now let's take it further and try to define about the acceleration. In this case, when the object is moving in a circular or rotational path, the acceleration is known as an angular acceleration. Why? Because in this case, it's not the linear path that is being covered. It is the angular path that is being covered. Yeah. And therefore, as a result, we are going to define about angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is related to linear acceleration as well. And therefore, angular acceleration is basically the cross product of the radius and the linear acceleration. This comes from the same expression for the case of torque. We'll use this concept of angular acceleration further. But let's understand about the angular acceleration in this module. As discussed in our last session, so we'll continue on with it. And now we'll go further and try to understand what are the laws of acceleration, what is the kind of energy that is produced when uh, there is a rotation motion taking place. Now, as we have already discussed about and we find the rule of chalk. So what does torque stand for? Torque is nothing but the R, that is the radius, times the tangential force that you have. So R into Ft. So that Ft can further be written as mass into tangential acceleration. So this can simply be written as mR square alpha. So this is because of the centripetal acceleration that you get. So this gives you about the, what exactly is the value of torque. Now taking it further, if you want to write down in terms of moment of inertia. So we know that mR square can simply be written as the moment of inertia I and alpha is the angular of, uh, angular acceleration. So this is simply written as I into alpha, where I is an analog of the mass and alpha is an analog of the linear acceleration. Taking it further, so if I have to take it further and try to understand about what are the forces and what results as a result, so we again compare it for the case of translation and rotation. So in the case of translation, what will you have? The rolling wheel is moving forward with kinetic energy. So it is moving ahead with kinetic energy. So obviously the center of mass is moving further. So when the center of mass itself is moving further, so there is a kinetic energy of the center of mass itself, which is going to be given by half mv squared. If I talk about the case of rotation motion, so the case of rotation motion, the ro rolling wheel is going to be rotating with some amount of kinetic energy. And in this case, the rotation is going to be about the center of mass. Therefore, there is going to be rotational kinetic energy that is going to be given. Yeah. Further, further is what we have as a rolling energy. So when any object is moving, so obviously there is a center of mass that is moving, as well as any point and the circumference of it that is also going to move it, be moving forward. So the total kinetic energy is going to be given by the summation of that center of mass energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So if I sum it up, so I'll get half mv square that is going to be the kinetic energy of the center of mass and half i omega square so that is the rotational kinetic energy. So if I add it up, so I'll get half mr square plus i so this can be taken off because we can be written as r into omega. So I'm is using this so i plus mr square into omega square so that gives the total kinetic energy so this is nothing but the parallel axis theorem so this gives us about the parallel axis theorem so what does it say the effective energy is the same as a wheel rotating about a point and it says effectively the this point is moving from here and this is a point of rotation of the or mo motion of the center of mass so these two are separated by some distance that's the reason you have the parallel axis theorem that comes into play. Finally, for the talki, talk, topic of energy conservation, if I say that there is a wheel that is rotating, moving in a downward direction, in this case, what you have, there is a change in kinetic energy due to the work done on the wheel because there is a force that is acting, it's making the wheel go downwards. There is a force that is acting as a stock, and as a result, the wheel is moving downwards. So the potential energy in this case is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So this is the case of rotation motion as well as the translation motion. Right? Hopefully you understood about it. Now we'll move on to the understanding about what exactly this moment of inertia stands for, or angular inertia. So students, we understood about how the angular acceleration is related to the linear acceleration. We defined the concept of torque before that. Further, we'll take it up and try to understand about the angular momentum. Angular momentum, like in the case of linear momentum, we find that rate of change of 
linear momentum is equal to the force. In a similar way, we will define the concept of angular momentum. And from the concept of angular momentum, we will come to the concept of rotational inertia. So these are the things that we are going to discuss next. So please be tuned.